Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lab Gab, a talk show about the virtual world of Second Life. I'm your host, Strawberry Linden. Today on our show, we are sitting at Shug's Shack Juke Joint, which is right across from the Eatonville Living History Museum in Second Life. I am with Soul Starlight and Yukiko Yeshto, who will be giving me a tour. Welcome to the show, Soul and Yukiko. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure to have you guys. I hope you're doing well and I can't wait for the tour. But before we get into that, I wanted you guys to take a bit um, and introduce yourselves to the audience a little bit. Tell me how long have you been in Second Life and what are the some, some what are some of the projects that you have been working on? Thanks a lot for the invitation to the Lab Gap. Um, the very first time I joined Second Life was back somewhere in 2006, if I remember correctly. I had a few breaks, but one of the things that always made me coming back is the freedom to be creative while meeting people from all around the globe and to learn from each other, be it about creativity, countries or cultures. As for projects, I'm actually involved into a bunch, some of which I am part of since years already to start off. I am a passionate drifter and therefore a member of the Daikoku Drift Championship, where I support a team with planning, organizing and judging and offer lessons and practice hours for beginners and advanced drifters likewise during the current seasons. And of course, I compete as well. Yeah. <laughs> I am also a member of the Corsica South Coasters community, which is a collective of various landholders where we join efforts to offer various events around art, music, exploring and more. Sol and I live both in the neighborhood, which is one of the reasons why we collaborated for the event around the Eternal Living History Museum. My own mainland tour project has its roots in my personal interest of driving and exploring. I started to invite people to discover and rediscover mainland by traveling in a group and combine the tours with sharing interesting facts about the visited locations. For example, I would give people some information about the history of an LDPW location. However, my aim was and is always that it is an interesting bit that encourages tour attendants to come back, explore more and just overall sparks an interest in them. So they would want to do their own researches and explorations. And hopefully in the long run, it would encourage them to contribute with their own ideas to the Second Life community. With that mainland tour project, I also started to collaborate with the Belisarian Bureau of Bureaucracy, or short BBB, by offering passport stamp collecting tours, mainly at Belisaria. When BBB announced the embassies, I found the idea of mainland embassies to be a fitting match for my personal intentions. So I became an ambassador for Sansara in January, and I aim for offering guided tours and organized events around this continent in close collaboration with its communities. Furthermore, I have a little project called Melotron where a friend of mine and I offer public places for the community, such as an airfield next to the LDPW Oak Hill Park, a GTFO hub for trucks at Heterosera, and a little winter artisan village in the snowlands of Sincera. Last but not least, I am co-owner at Kuro Model, which came to life when Juan Sehu became my best friend throughout the years, even though in real life we live on two different continents, would invite me to watch him working in Blender and Substance Painter while he created for Second Life, and we then decided to turn this into a store. So, long story short, all the projects I am part of center on exploring, driving, creating, and collaborating. Wow, that's a lot of stuff that you're a part of and sounds so exciting. <laughs> um, how about you, Sol? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us, Strawberry. So I'm Sol, and I've been in SL since 2007. Um, I found out about SL through a class in college, and I've been in love with the creativity expressed and shared in our world since then. Um, during my time in SL, I've contributed to the fashion, media, and nonprofit 
the communities. Having worked with companies like Avenue, Sister, Sister excuse me, of SL Magazine and Treat TV, and volunteered for a few years with SL's birthday celebration, the arcade, and other community-based orgs under my first Abbey. Um, I'm currently a mainland experience creator, so I absolutely love to travel, and I do rides and tours around mainland with groups like Yukiko's uh, Mainland Tours, the Drivers of SL Group, and the Leeward Cruising Club. I am super excited about working with and creating communities on mainland to share creativity, to find connections, and to enjoy travel together. I was really inspired to start creating on the mainland after my first mainland purchase on Route 6 in Hetero Serra, um, up on the mountains called Ascension Park. I created that first space for everyone to enjoy as they travel the mountain trail, and I really found a deep joy in creating more spaces for people to find and love as they travel mainland. I now own um, a little bit more than a full region's worth of experiences spread across the continents um, through my company Ascend b, b which is a land sale and vacation rental experience company featuring ready to enjoy spaces that are along mainland roads, water and mountain paths. Um, through Ascend b, b, b excuse me, I find joy in creating so many different like engaging experiences that are free to the public. Um, some of those are Wonder Park Theme Park, Little Kenya Restaurant, and of course the Eatonville Living History Museum. I am just starting to work with community organizations to throw events at some of these locations, but am always looking to share and just connect with residents who are new to the mainland um, for opportunities to travel, to connect and to build community across the continent. Amazing. I love all of the community work that you guys are working on. It sounds so great. Uh, I do want to mention to the viewers that if you guys look in the description of the videos, uh, you will find a lot of links to a lot of the projects and, and community building um, endeav endeavors both of these um, residents are working on. So take a look, click over, and hopefully you'll get even more information about that. So you, uh, so you mentioned the idea uh, 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 or mentioned the uh, Eatonville Living History Museum. Can you tell us how was uh, how did that idea of creating the museum come about and what was the inspiration behind it? Absolutely. It's actually a really um, funny and insightful story. So the Eatonville Living History Museum is a representation of a freedom town in the American South after emancipation, mm -hmm. so around the late 1800s. Um, it was created out of a deep admiration for the strength and, re and resilience of my African and African American ancestry and just the love that they had for us in the future. Um, it was inspired by a love of culture as expressed through Black literature in the works of authors like Zora Neale Hurston and Alice Walker. Um, I actually found the space and I was in the process of doing my yearly binge watching of the adaptations of their eyes are watching God and the color purple. So I was just like yeah. <laughs> watching movies and planning. Love those. Um, and I actually, yes, <laughs> I originally reserved the um, spot for a community contribution and for the Corsica South Coasters, um, a group that both Yukiko and I are residents and members of. I was just so moved and so inspired by the beautiful depictions of black lives in the movies, just sharing this moment in time where there was so much hardship, but also so much love and strength and beauty. It really made me think about our current time and the allegories there. And I wanted to manifest those same feelings. I wanted people to feel like they were in a moment in time and to feel the resilience and the reaffirmation of strength um, that we exuded in that time and in the times to come. So I wanted to share that with all of SL um, for folks to both learn and gain from. Very powerful. So how did you both meet and mm -hmm. how did your collaboration for the event come about? Sol and I met when I was scouting for locations to visit for one of my mainland tours. I reached out to her because I wanted to know more about her project and of course, she would then ask me back about my project as well. And it turned out that we had similar aims, how to spend our time in Second Life and how we would want to contribute to the community. We stayed in touch and uh, months later, Sol would move into the area of Corsica South Coast and create the museum. I always had the plan to include the museum in one of my tours, but Things turned out a bit different. It was actually a simple question asked by Aurora, the owner of the Sisters in Second Life group. Is anyone aware of an event in February for Black History Month? I told her, 
I wasn't, but then I would like to recommend the museum for a visit. And at the same time, I reached out to Seoul as well, telling her that Aurora might contact her. In that millisecond, this idea crossed my mind and I just spontaneously said to Seoul, but what if we actually collaborated for an event at the museum? So one hour of brainstorming later, we had mapped out the idea and well, the rest is history. <laughs> I would like to add that one of the really important things for us was that the event is, for one, not just a two-women show, but actually a community effort to which we invited various people and communities to support. And second, that it would allow open discussions and encourage people to find out more about the topic talking about collaborations which sometimes come together in a very funny way in second life just a few days before the actual event we both noticed that post about the i hopefully say it correctly miro museum we were excited to see that other people have similar ideas to support a cause that we both find important and Seoul's friend established a contact to the spoken word performers. Surprisingly for us, it turned out that one of them is actually the curator of said museum. For us, this is one of those lovely examples, how things fall nicely in place and how people come together just because you follow your passion. I, can I, uh, I just, I kind of wanted to give a shout out right here because I actually reached out to Aurora in January and she was so amazing because I, I reached out to her, I said, Aurora, I'd like to feature some events or destinations for Black History Month in February and I, I don't know where to go or where to get the information and I, I asked her, can you help me with that? And she came back with uh, this museum, the Little Kenya Restaurant, and the Moreau Museum, and that's how we got to know of all these places. And then we got so awesome. got together with Moreau to create the <laughs> video and everything. So I really want to give a shout out to Aurora or because she, within like a few days, she got back to me. This, thank this, you, this, and, and I just I really want to thank her. I, I don't know if she's watching, but thank you, Aurora. Really, I, and I that's the biggest I think issue that I have when I want to feature all these wonderful events and and destinations that are you know happening in the world. I don't know, so I would love it if people submitted these events and destinations to the destination guide or reach out to me directly uh, if you're not sure how to do that and and i can help you through that process but go ahead Sol. uh you wanted to add how the uh of course project. And yeah thank you for connecting community in the way that you do and thank you so much to aurora for connecting us connect, connecting community and all the work that you do with sisters of sl really appreciate it for sure um I just, yeah, I just wanted to add that um, I'm so honored to have met and work with Roz. Um, it was really exciting to connect community in that way. I love community building and I'm just excited about the work that both Yukiko and Roz contribute. Um, and I know that we'll work on things in the future. So thank you to both. Um, just also wanted to add that both of the events that we've held for Black History Month at Little Kenya Restaurant and Animal Sanctuary, that's next to the restaurant, and at the Eatonville Living History Museum will remain through February. So please come on out and enjoy the art and fashion shared at the restaurant, as well as the museum here. The museum actually will be a permanent installation, so you're always welcome awesome. as long as I'm here. Wonderful. So glad it'll be here permanently. I actually would love to go on that tour that you had offered um, to the residents. Of, uh, I think it was just a yes, few days ago. Uh, and um, after that, hopefully we can listen to some spoken word performances. So uh, let's get on that tour now. Today we honor Black History Month by celebrating the strength and resilience of the African-American community by walking through a moment in time as shared in literature by Alice Walker, Zora Neale Hurston, and Sue Monk Kidd. We begin our tour at the start of a fictional freedom town, Eatonville, during the late 1800s. There were over 50 such incorporated towns and locations across the South US, some of who thrived amid very limited resources to start. This town is inspired by the rendition of Eatonville from the book, Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, as shared in the movie by the same name. This piece shares a moment in time from the book, The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. As you look around, you'll see the Wailing Wall, a space that may from the story used to heal and the behive that led to a sense of freedom for the protagonists of the story. During this time, 
beekeeping and other learned skills help black families to earn and provide. The Secret Life of Bees depicts one such family gaining fortune in selling honey produced by their bees and sharing this beautiful notion of finding freedom through self-reliance and kinship to a young woman in transition. Black families lived and thrived in homes that were built by hand with the materials that were available to the town at that time. Some incorporated towns were financed and had access to better resources, thus increasing the opportunity for an incorporated town to grow. In the book, Their Eyes Were Watching God, the protagonist, Janie, experienced life through an incorporated town that started meager but grew into a bustling town with Victorian-style homes and an enviable general goods store. The growth in the town, expressed through perseverance and a shared dedication to freedom, is synonymous to the energy felt and shared in real-life Freedom Town. Water was an important conduit to change in the times before and after slavery. It was a way to find freedom through escape from captivity, a way to enrich soil on new lands, and a way to sustain a new path in times ahead. In Their Eyes Were Watching God, Janie finds healing and sovereignty through water and escapes in it to find a sense of being in a world not quite made for her rebellious and free spirit. The heartbeat of an incorporated black town. The general store carried produce, home goods, fabrics, and other exports to help the town's citizens with essentials. This space was also a main thoroughfare for community as it served as a connection point to other black towns. The general goods store often served as a comfortable place for citizens to convene and relax over games. A playable checker set on the porch represents just one of the many activities town citizens enjoyed with each other. Each piece of literature expressed in the museum shares a different perspective of life for free black residents in their respective places in the South and collectively shares the diversity of experience had by African ancestors who thrived at that time. Here, we see a collection of citizens who might have lived in our representation of a freedom town, each with their unique expression of life at that time. Notice phases of joy, anger, uncertainty, and more. As incorporated towns arose, its citizens arrived from all walks of life with a shared goal toward personal and collective freedom. Our last exhibit features a walk with Shug, Avery, and Seely down to the juke joint. In the book, The Color Purple by Alice Walker, these two characters find love and companionship through a shared sense of freedom from expectation. Shug finds her freedom through her voice and shares her beautiful song with us in the juke joint. As you walk through this area, you'll hear Shug and Seely engaged in a conversation. To best experience the Eatonville Living History Museum, be sure to turn your sounds on so that you can be guided through a immersive experience through the museum. Thank you again for being with us. We really hope that you enjoyed the tour and invite you to come back anytime. Thank you so much, Sol and Yukiko. That was a beautiful tour, very moving. Um, I hope people come and take advantage of the tour. We are going to end the tour and by walking down to Shook's Jack Juke Joint, where we are going to experience some wonderful um, spoken word performances. Uh, the performers are Ross Solaris. He's the owner of Moreau Museum. Also, we have Muki Lozarno and Tatiana Yvette. Um, thank you once again. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the tour and uh, speak to you all soon. This piece is dedicated to our culture. Uh, the original people around the world, which includes more than us in America, right? But in this month, we like to just think about America, but I like to, like for us to think about a little bit more than that because we come from a really old people. So I'm gonna just jump right into it. Let me introduce myself to you and the rest. Class is in session. This is what I try to do best. My name is Roz. I spell it, the ruler always supreme. That's R-A-S. Nothing but truth, no more, no less. That's R-A-S, rise always sun. Cosmic, I shine like one. Solaris bright, knowledge is light. Class is in session. And today's lesson is you and us. And I want you to absorb the knowledge and trust. Moreau College, I'm a visiting professor, that's me, and I'm here to give a little lecture. See, I came to reveal a big mystery, 
a secret truth that was revealed to me. The secrets of space time, the secrets of my history and your history. We didn't start with 600 years of misery. We older than 6,000 years. That's the time that the Vatican wants to use. Just like TV, some people teaching lies to confuse. And then when the real truth is locked in their six mile basement, some people think it's a new world order arrangement. The truth I was sent, so I won't, I won't vent. I'ma focus on this lesson. But I have to say, I won't even discuss how every museum in the Vatican likes to steal our stuff and how they just now admitting that they're wrong. And now we all waking up and we all singing the peace song. Now, lesson one for your newbies. This is an intro. This is the foundation, literally the root, the ancestors knowledge collected based on ancient truths. Atom called Adam is the first in existence, vibrated, using willpower, split became fission, solar explosions and cell division, macro to micro, science of duality and clear vision. Now my DNA connected, ancestors knowledge is collected, it's why we say we live forever. It's not a single person, but you got to be clever to understand math at that level. See, listen close, we the first on the earth, we the first taught what knowledge was worth, we were the first to say know thyself, we were the first to define knowledge as wealth. We were the first ones who brought civilization. We were the first to discover lands, leave colonies, develop a global empire, one beautiful global nation. And we the first to develop writing. We the first to try to harness the lightning. We were the first to develop the sciences. This includes all of the core ones, mathematics, chemistry, biology, and astronomy. So listen close, grab your notes, come with me from your shores, from your shoes to your toothbrush and your combs, the concept of a toilet, a hygiene, and even your home. We never, ever, ever lived in caves. They try to make us think we came only from slaves. How? Well, we the same people who really invented toothpaste. Some, th some thought that that's all we ever was. And this is because of shit TV and the media be trying to tell us Africa is nothing but grass and huts. Animals everywhere, like really, come on, what the fuck? But when they dug up the ancients, they found the laws. They found us in the middle of us, and they broke the noses off the statues and the bust. I hate to say it, it breaks my heart. Wakanda, it's a fiction, but I'm here to tell you the truth. So I mentioned the real name was Kush, Timbuktu, Benin, Ethiopia, and even little old Moreau. Just so you know, all your culture, 100,000 years to be exact. DNA extracts back all these facts. And here we are, 100,000 years later. We still vibing, still greater. And now I hear someone in the crowd yelling out, a hater. He's saying, Roz, Roz, that info is old. You and Moreau supposed to be coming with the current shit. That's what we was told. I say, you mean the modern era? Old school Europe now in America, the era of the unknown black geniuses. So take, for example, the Three Musketeers, Consider one of the greatest stories and classics written by a brother Alexander, but where the movie at? Not even Netflix wants to touch these facts. And another genius and unknown, my man Frederick McKinley Jones, 60 total inventions, not Elon Musk, him, 60 total inventions, no mentions, and 40 of those patents created refrigerations. And on hot days, ice cream brings nothing but elation. So I just got one real serious question. Where his birthday in this nation? Don't get me wrong, I love all. I'm not here for hating. Same thing for Charles Drew. For years, they studied blood. Then he studied blood. The value he saw, he knew. He created blood plasma. It saves millions of lives today, but yet we still begging and we still asking, where are those statues? No, it's only sports legends and buffoons, but instead on the news is a lot of anti-black propaganda. So I don't watch the view. And as on one culture, we're gonna move. We got no racism, cause that's how you lose. No colorisms or isms of any ways. We wanna see clearly burn through all the lies with x-rays, cause there's unity and diversity. It's what we shout, me, my team, the museum, we knocking uh, isms the fuck out. Now, I know I'm kind of long winded and you're like, come on Roz, I know I'm almost running out of time and I'm gonna cover these next topics really fast. So please take notes, screen capture, do whatever you need because we near the end of class.
In the America, in the modern era, we know our people came back as Olmec. They brought civilization and agriculture and tech to the lost colonies. Lost colonies were really lost explorers from ancient Ethiopia and Nubia, sent to explore, sometimes heard of no more, but the earth was never flat and no people popped up like mushrooms because everyone on the planet originally was black. And this is the story of what I've been saying of how they came to be. Black people sailing a minimum of 20,000 BC. So here we are once again, back to 100,000 years ago. Ask yourself, why are you hearing it from me? Why you didn't know? This is how they came to be. And this is the same thing with Malaysia, the Philippines, Pacific Islanders, Australia, and also Asia. And they've been telling us our whole lifetime. They show a map all the time that shows the ancient advanced civilizations of Africa, India, and Asia, the empire of the black sun. That was our clue, explore the world as one. Now, in these last moments in time, we're gonna talk the future. Listen close, take note. African Americans while we all slept, Black Americans while some wept, all of us in the diaspora, Africa is on the move. Intercontinental trade agreement for the free flow of services and goods. Resolve continental economic issues, it could. Drones and massive technology to support agriculture and medicines. One cultures are trying to get in at us and they keep banging saying, let us in. But most Black Americans call you Farrakhan when you mention the homeland, like it's a problem. Half your issues Moving there might solve them. The continent got 20 different space agencies, 1 billion in crypto, and all the world's critical resources. And we fight for scraps and reparation. But people, I am not saying we into separation. What I'm saying is we have choice, dual citizenship, because with international connects, you got deep vision. And all of this information is one Google search, one click, and one decision. But if you hear an SL, you can find it at Moreau Museum, home of black culture and second life. We're listed under destinations. And I promise if you sip this truth, you sip this tea, your fist, you're going to be raising. Now it's time for this lesson to end. And remember, everything I said is a searchable fact. I want you to be proud of who you are because you are an ancient people, the first blacks. Now, we got many cousins all over the earth. We populated the earth by the dozens. It's a billion of us. And for some reason, we not claiming them. We act like we ashamed of them. But I'm here to say, fuck that. Love us. Because what the fuck? Everything I said today came from public sources, museums, and libraries. So don't, don't be scared of me. I quoted them to prevent debating me. And if you need to argue, take it up with the museums and the scholars. Don't run up to me to holler. It won't work on me. I didn't come to debate. I came to drop seeds because Moreau and me, we here for those seeking to be free. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. Check us out this weekend at the Moreau Music Festival. I hope everyone appreciate or liked it. I appreciate it really being here. Thank you. Oh, it's a World Music Festival. It's going from Friday to Saturday. Uh, it's 10 hours each day, and we're going to cover our music throughout the diaspora. That's from Europe to Australia, Africa to Asia, soca music, Brazilian music, Afro house, Afro beat, hip hop, all positive music, uh, nothing negative, all positive, promoting unity through diversity. We're going to try to make it annual, so feel free to come out any of these two days. I really appreciate it. And please make sure you go to all the museums of our culture. Well, actually, all museums, because I don't want people to be confused. We are all connected. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So happy to be here. Wow, Roz, you just blow me away every time you get on the mic. I don't know what I'm doing here with you and Tati. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. Beautiful job. First, uh, let me say thank you so much for allowing me to grace your stage. I'm so excited to be here. I would like to uh, say Thank you to my family. Also, my family is here. i um, part of them. And let me tell you, they are my number one supporters. Always riding around with me and showing up when I need them the most. And I do need them. Thank you guys for being here and even caring. Um, I have a piece here. This piece is entitled um, Power to Change the World. Uh, we all... All of us have a power within us to change something in this 
world today if we would just take the steps to do it. Um, we get complacent sometimes. Uh, we get fed up and tired and we say, nah, I'm not, not going there, not doing that. But hopefully after today, we'll be motivated to take a step in the right direction, um, to pick someone up that is downtrodden and help them along the way. This is entitled Power to Change the World. You ever wonder why you do the things you do, say the things you say, even teach the things you teach, live the life you make every day? Try to be the things you say you be only to question the reasons that have to be explained. You ever wonder if anyone is listening, if they're hearing, if they're sharing, even comparing. You ever wonder why you chose the path that led to this moment? Sitting here thinking, and all of a sudden it hits me. Maybe I didn't choose, maybe it chose me maybe it chose us just trying to be a better me and leave a legacy for all to see that even the change that bind can be the change that free even me we would be drowning without a hope too numb to feel the pain at times that pain of inconsistency and complacency the battles of life that bring much strife Holding the power within each of us to make a change, we hold the key to change a life, change a way of thinking, change the battle of fighting to a way of accepting one's ways. In spite of the dimensions of a country or its demographics, knowing that a river flows for a reason, we can't become motionless, but must keep moving, reaching for that that is higher than we are where we stand. Keep striving to reach one and teach one, bringing the broken along with us for we hold the power to change this world. We, we hold the power to change even this world. Independence is important for many lost lives to support it. Our country stands strong on it. We have liberty, they say, and equality in our dreams of being totally free one day. And we count on it being a bond of ease and totality and breaking any chain that would bind us to a life without it. Keeping our minds free and strong to rid us of anything that would keep us from reaching our, our goals and climbing to the top. I say put your weapons down and pick up your dictionaries. Do we not know that we hold the power of life and death in our tongues? Give life to someone today. No more blood-stained streets, babies crying at broken bodies strayed along the way. I listen to people say all the time, if I could change the world, I would end suffering and bring about world peace. Why, if I could change the world, the world I would that everyone see nothing but the beauty in it. Not even realizing that the words we speak have life. If we would choose to use the right words, what powerful changes in this world we would be able to make. For together, we can be what we say and set our sights on things bigger than you and even I. We can accomplish all that we begin and all that we finish as long as we don't allow those chains of this life to keep us downtrodden and full of no hope and dreams. It's supposed to be a little give and take in this, but at times all it looks like is take and more take. But let me tell you, but for the red blood that was shed, I stand proud of all that we aim to accomplish for breaking the chains off that would bind us and remembering that we can't do it alone. For I hear a battle cry in the distance. For we hear our battle cry in the distance. For we hold the power to change the world. I say we hold the power to change even this world we hold the power to change the world thank you so much thank you
thank you for inviting me and I absolutely love everything about these poets and I just love to be amongst all these people who love the culture so um, I will just render one poem for you all and um, this poem definitely came about just because I am a history teacher and some of the hardest things for me to do is teach their history so <laughs> I wrote this poem just for that. <laughs> Why do we allow the system to give us the shortest month to celebrate us who have the broadest of history? No disrespect to ex King in the parks, but so many more helped lay down a foundation to help us walk on these parts. Tubman and Turner, we know what you have done to be a rebel for the cause. But let me introduce you to some names that are rarely called. See, in a fucked up system where we don't trust the courts or the police most of the time, Jane Bolin was the first black woman judge in 1939. She worked with Roosevelt to create a program to help stop young boys from committing crimes. And even though they think they controlled the trees they hung my ancestors from, a black woman headed the largest tree planting campaign. So let me say her by name. When Gary Matai, the first black woman to win the Environmental Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> and Rosa Parks, damn sure she refused to give up her seat. And that's brave, but what about Claudette Colvin, who at 15 did the same thing on March 2nd, 1955? Yeah, that fateful day. And despite what the history books told, Matthew Henson, a black man, was the first one at the North Pole. And even amongst the clouds, let's talk about Jesse Leroy Brown, the first black aviator in the Navy. So stop having them only teach you your blackness when it comes down to slavery. And we hear all about Thomas Edison and his light bulb invention, but it was Louis Latimer who made the light last with his filament system. See, I can go all day because you can look around and see what Black people have put they stamped on and how many things have made life easier for you and me. See the stoplight, the clothes dryer, the potato chip too, the automatic gear shift, iron board, dustpan, and folding chair, just to name a few. Ice cream scoop, mop, security system, pressure cooker, even the toilet that you sit on, a hairbrush, a curtain rod, a doorknob, and the concept of a cell phone. So it's time to learn about the unsung and the unknown in their pursuits because it's so much more to us to show and talk about than a month long of watching Roots. So learn your roots deep, wide, and long, beautiful, black, and strong. See, they envy us because they hate to see us a beautiful melanated people becoming what we were always created by the master's hands to be. So I refuse to allow them to just make me proud in the second month of the year because I love this brown and I want them to hear that you can try to keep us as low as you want, but you will never stop this <laughs> fun kiss flow. In in poem. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you all enjoyed that. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>